Our dearest Lord and Father of all mankind, we praise you for your faithfulness towards us. We praise you for the faith that you have imparted to us. Teach us how to anchor our praise in your faithfulness than in the manifestation of your blessings. Amen. The realities of our situations can at times destroy our praise and make us crestfallen. But that's if we focus on the negative. If we were to consider all that God has already done for us, we would walk and talk praise more than anything else. And when we add to the fact that God's promises are steadfast and that not one of the words he has spoken will return to him void, our praise would echo long before our desires are realized. A praise that is rooted in the hope of God's fulfilled promises is shatterproof. Deuteronomy 10 verse 21 tells us, He is your praise and he is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. The word tauda is one of the seven words used for praise. It is defined simply as thanksgiving. But it's not just for things manifested, but it's thanksgiving for those things not yet received. Wrapped up in this meaning is confidence in God and the fact that we can take him at his word. Tauda praise requires an understanding of the love and the faithfulness of God and of the promises of God. How can we hold God to promises we don't even know exist? When we know what God has promised and trust his character, then Toda fills our worship. Doesn't this sound a lot like faith? Hebrews 11 verses 1 to 2 read, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Thanksgiving for proof that is not yet seen and evidence that is not manifested is the kind of praise that God finds delight in. And the fun part is, as the verse tells us, by this very thing, the elders obtain a good testimony and so will we. A good testimony awaits every one of us who express Tauda, thanksgiving from deep within our core. In Luke chapter 17, we meet 10 people who had reasons to shout for and dance to praise. Jesus took from them a scourge that alienated them from their family, shut them off from their community, and left them for dead. Bonded by adversity, they shouted to Jesus for help, and he hearkened to them. Luke 17 verse 14 says, So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. They had been cured from the dreaded disease leprosy. All ten headed into town to show themselves to the temple priest as he was the one who would give them the official clean bill of health. Upon seeing what Jesus' words had done, one of them, a Samaritan in the group, had a stronger desire to go to the divine priest than to the earthly sanctuary priest. So he turned back to find Jesus. His desire was not to find his family to say, see, I can come home. I'm sure that would come later. But his immediate desire was to offer thanksgiving. Burning in his soul was the tauder praise. And so he found Jesus, and with a loud voice, the scripture says, he glorified God. Luke 17, verse 16 reads, And he fell down at his feet, giving him thanks. 
and he was a Samaritan. Let's remember that Jesus and the man would have been in the public space, but it didn't matter. When Tauda took a hold of this ex-leper, he abandoned all cultural norms and praised the healer who set him free. And true to Hebrews 11 verse 2 that tells us that we receive a good reward for this, Jesus pronounced a blessing on the Thanksgiving Samaritan. It was in addition to what he already received. Verse 19 of Luke 17 says, And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. This was no ordinary blessing. Jesus told him, you are now liberated, set free. Your act of yada has made you free. He bowed before Jesus as a Samaritan, a cast out, a reject, an untouchable, but he was one who had experienced the universality of God's blessing. He shouted to Jesus as part of a group, but he understood that he had been blessed as an individual and he would not take that for granted. His praise, his thanksgiving, his tawda opened the door for freedom. Now he was truly free, set free by the Son of God and all through his unshackled praise. Too often, we take the universal blessings of God as general bestowment and not as individual gifts. We landed safely from a flight. No real thanks. After all, there were over 200 people on the plane. Or we had minimal damage from a storm. And we see this as God being good to the country, not good to you, an individual. When we generalize God's blessings, we don't feel the burning desire of Toda. And whenever thanksgiving is missing from our lives, we are in shackles. One would have thought that having leprosy was the real imprisonment and that the man was already set free when all ten were healed. But no, his liberation happened when he returned to give thanks and praise. What is God saying to us today? We are not experiencing the fullness of his blessings because we lack the desire to give thanks to God, to God only and to God first. Have you ever had God work out something for you? But before you stop to say thanks, to live in the moment of that blessing, you begin to express concern about how the other things are going to be resolved. That's a spirit that is chained to problems. Ingratitude is a sign of spiritual imprisonment. Our heart is in prison. Our spirit is shackled and thus our tongues are frozen. But when we offer total, because of what God has done, we run looking for a time to say, thank you, Lord. And when that grateful heart's aroma reaches heaven, all chains are broken. You have been made whole, Jesus told the Samaritan. You have been liberated. You are set free. So let's start right now. As a little song says, Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings and see what God has done. And then like David in 1 Chronicles 16 verse 8, we all can give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name and make known his deeds among the people. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all gifts and the reservoir of more than we can seek, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings, seen and unseen. We bow at your feet like the Samaritan made clean from leprosy, and we shout with a loud voice, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May your acceptance of our praise set us free from all spiritual shackles, is our prayer with thanksgiving. Thus we say, 
Amen and amen.